Welcome back to News here on Rise News. Now, education is pivotal to the economic development of the country. And the sad truth is that other countries of the world, Nigeria's economy cannot improve if the education system is wobbled. Now, the deficiencies that Nigeria is faced with are primarily hinged on flawed education, which includes insufficient infrastructures and learning materials, ill-equipped schools, untrained, ill-trained, and underpaid teachers, insecurity, and lack of funding, amongst others. Now, stakeholders say Nigeria education will battle an avalanche of challenges that consequently affect its economic growth and development. Rotimi Olawale is the director at Youth Hub Africa, and he joins us now to discuss the education subject and its impact on the country's economy and development. Good to have you. All right, I want to say, let's start it off with Rotimi. Thank As it stands right now, we're just... We're just lifting out of the election season. And that means that in a few months or in a few weeks, according to some, we will be having a transition happen and a new government will be coming in. As it stands right now, if you were to, uh, if you were to speak to the president-elect on education, what do you think is priority number one in regards to the educational sector here in Nigeria? Thank you very much. If I have the opportunity to speak to Nigeria's president-elect today, I would tell him that Nigerian education system is in shambles, and we need to assemble a team to look into how do we build Nigeria's education from the scratch, especially primary education. If the primary education is not, uh, is not, is not well built, you cannot really build any foundation on it. So we need to start from the basics. We need to start from basic education primary education, how do we get primary education to deliver the goods that we want it to deliver in terms of quality education for our children, uh, ensuring that they are able to have uh, numeracy and literacy skills, and this is very important. We need to measure, we need to monitor, and we need to ensure that we deliver extremely very well on primary education. If you ask me right now, I don't think Nigeria is doing effectively well in our primary education, and we need to do better. All right, uh, from a general point of view, Rotimi, where do we need to be with education in Nigeria at the moment? I think that in the case of education that we have at the moment, if you ask uh, any parent, most parents don't want their kids to go to public schools. And that's to tell, that tells you the state of public education in Nigeria. Unfortunately, not every parent can afford to pull their kids out of public schools into private education. And we need to ensure that investment that is currently going into public education delivers the goods. At federal level, we have investment at about four, five, six percent of the budget. At state level, we have some states doing uh, very well. I think uh, states like Sokoto, Kaduna, or your state are doing well over 20 percent of their budget on education. Many states are doing single digit investment in education, and this is not good enough. The only thing that we need to do is not just about increasing financing, because sometimes when you even on the park, what is going into the finance, you see that they are building additional infrastructures, classrooms. Classrooms are good, but we know that politicians like to fund construction because they benefit a lot from construction and they can show and tell communities that this is where they spend their money on. But there are a lot of things that help to improve education that does not, that is not show and tell. Investment in teacher education, paying teachers promptly, hiring the right kind of right fit of teachers. A lot of politicians use teacher hiring as political allergies, giving uh, slots to, to, to their cronies across the state. We need to first measure and ask ourselves, how many math teachers do we need? How many science teachers do we need? So that we can hire right and deploy resources to where it is best needed. And we need to ensure that this is done across the state and across the federation. All right, um, Rotimi, um, the brain drain is becoming a big issue and a very worrisome issue of that. Understanding that the National Assembly has even waded into this and they're looking for, or they're trying to pass legislations that will block certain cater of students after acquiring education here in Nigeria to probably go abroad to go apply their trade. As it stands, what, first of all, let's start it from that particular point. What's your perspective about this? Do you think that is the right way to go? If you're looking at it from a patriotic lens, and secondly, how do we stop brain drain 
here in Nigeria because we are complaining that the educational sector is at its lowest herb. But yet people are getting education here and going out of Nigeria to practice. That means the education is still worth something, at least on paper. I, th I think that there are many factors that are contributing to brain drain, but in my opinion, the biggest factor is that young people are taking a bet on the future of Nigeria, and they are saying to themselves they don't see their future in Nigeria, and they're placing their future elsewhere. First question I'll ask parliamentarians is they need to do an introspect of themselves. How many of them have their kids studying in Nigeria? And that's the first place to start. I don't think any measures from the political class to stop the brain drain with legislation would work. I think everybody needs to put their hand on the floor. Do people see hope in Nigeria? There was a time in the history of Nigeria where people in diaspora were coming back in, in Nigeria because they saw opportunities here and they see hope in Nigeria. That has changed. If the administration do the right investments in the country, reduce the rate of uh, insecurity in Nigeria, ensure that uh, job opportunities is not given to those who are the highly connected, but is merit driven, people will begin to see hope in Nigeria. If people have hope in Nigeria, if we treat them well, people will stay. The current legislation in parliament is targeting specifically medical doctors. The rate of our institutions, medical institutions in Nigeria is appalling. Medical doctors have complained for years and years that they don't get residency opportunities in Nigeria. And so if you put a cap and say they shouldn't travel for five years, you are not hiring them. When you hire them, you're not paying them promptly and you're not paying them well and they work with uh, uh, obsolete equipment. This is not the way to treat the very best of our students, of our young who have dedicated several years to study and, and come out with a certification in Nigeria. If there is hope in the nation, if we put the nation on the right path towards progress and development, I don't think we need any legislation to stop people from staying back in Nigeria. Any medical doctor that remains in Nigeria, knowing that they can be paid anywhere else, probably three or four times much more than they are being paid in Nigeria, they are offering patriotic service to the nation, and we need to encourage them to do better. No, okay, um, okay. this probably answer the second question that I asked, that you just also alluded to that particular fact. It's almost here nor there, because you're saying on one hand that we education, the, our education here is poor, but yet people outside Nigeria seem to value what we are actually producing. Case in point, medical doctors. Rosemary, did you get me? I didn't get the question, please. I was, my my question is simple. How do you, how do you justify it? We are sp speaking about the fact that the educational sector is poorly funded and th the levels of education in Nigeria is poor. But yet, uh, those that we actually produce from this same poor educational sector are still being sought after world over. How do you, how, how do you, how do you marry these two together? Unfortunately, we are, we're placing emphasis only on the 5%, the people who have been privileged. For you to finish a university education in Nigeria, you definitely are in one way or the other privileged. Let's look at the stats. As I speak to you today, there are about roughly between 10 to 13 million Nigerian children who have no opportunity to step inside a school. That means they don't have a primary education and they are within that age range. When you move the needle further, you see a dropout rate from primary to secondary education takes a dip. The biggest dip we have in Nigeria is from junior secondary to senior secondary and from senior secondary to tertiary education. Roughly about 1.2 million, 1.5 million rights per heck, the entrance examination into higher institutions every year, only about 200, 300,000 gain, 400,000 at most gain an admission. And if you, if you track that figure further and you look at NYC, how many people do National Youth Service Corps in, in the course of one year? 100,000, 150,000, 200,000 maximum. So you see, you put in figures at the primary level of around 20, 30 million. You come out at the output, you're only getting roughly 400,000. Where are those who are lost between the way? So you are only focusing on the 400,000, 5, 10%, the cream de la cream, who has had the opportunity to gain university education? What's the state of polytechnic education in, in Nigeria? What's the state of federal technical colleges in Nigeria? The standards are extremely low and extremely poor. 
So if you have a university education in Nigeria, if you've going to, gone to medical school, law school, you're probably among the privileged who've had such a, an opportunity in Nigeria. Don't even look at those who have gained admission into private universities because now we have proliferation of private universities across Nigeria. Let's focus on those who've gone into state universities and federal universities. They are very privileged. And in some cases, government has subsidized their education in order to, for it to remain affordable. Indeed, very uh, uh, interesting perspective there, Rotimi. But I'd like your thoughts on technology and education. Uh, what are the prospects uh, for development in Nigeria? And uh, we're seeing some occasional commitments uh, from tech giants like Microsoft, or of course, uh, Zuckerberg's uh, Meta and others uh, recently. But is that enough, you think? I, I think that the increase of technology into our educational space provides both opportunities and also sometimes caution. But first, it has to start with what is the grand vision. And that's one area the incoming president and his team can begin to think about and say, what is our vision on bringing ICT into the educational space over the next 20 years? What are the right, side of, right set of infrastructures that we need to build? What are the right set of skill sets that we need to build in our teachers? Because trust me, buying computers and sending them to schools alone does not cut it. I have visited several schools where computers have been donated, but they are locked up in labs because they don't have the right skill set for people to teach the kids on how to use the computers. In several schools, there are no power, there is no electricity, there is not even not the right security to secure the computers in school. So it's not just about investing in equipment, it's about the entire ecosystem. How do we get it right? Because trust me, kids in several other countries are taking a leapfrog ahead of Nigerian students. Today to write the JAMB examination is a computer-based test. Many kids are facing the computers for the first time when they begin to prepare for this test and we need to do better. We need the right set of investment. I think that we need to do, get our kids to start going to things like programming at a very young age because we can see even in Nigeria for the kids who have invested, for the youngsters in Nigeria who have invested in this and built a lot of startups, we've seen that this investment has yielded a lot for them and their immediate uh, environment. And we need to ensure that many more of these happen in the Nigerian ecosystem. All right, Rotimi Olawale, I want to say thank you very much for your time here on Newsday.